Well, in this um, Atheist Sunday School, we're going to do Babylon the Great has fallen, Revelation 17 and 18. If it's this on, uh, chapter 17 is on the religious aspect of Babylon, the last great world system before the return of Christ, Babylon will be overthrown by the beast. The invitation, Revelation 17, 1 through 2. Since the seven vials brought God's complete wrath on the world, including the fall of Babylon, one of those angels invites John to go to the wilderness to see the great horror, the final apostate world system. It has been pointed out that there are four women in Revelations, one Jezebel, picturing apostasy creeping into the church. Revelations 2, 20. Of course, you can go to uh, Bi uh, King James Bible Online org if you want to see the verses for yourself. And of course, you can go to gotquestions.org if you want to see them explain away a lot of Bible doctrine. Israel, Revelations 12, 1, 3, the harlot, the final apostate world system, the wife of the lamb, command, common man cannot see this chapter's truth, and even John would struggle to tell them from the angel's invitation. Many worldly Christians refuse to believe these truths and believe the world, can, the world church is a blessing of peaceful coexistence. The explanation, Revelation seventeen three through eighteen, the angel explains the symbols. The woman in verse eighteen is a city, and in John's day reigned over the earth the kings. The seven heads of the verse three are identified as seven mountains. In verse nine, with love, doubt the city is Rome, which is situated on the seven hills. When Revelation was written, Rome was running over the kings of the earth. And of course, some there's some churches will say all the beast and all that's the Roman Catholic Church and all that stuff. Like the Seventh Day Adventists, you really should check out their beliefs. It's kind of weird. Not that it matters. The beast, the same beast from chapter 13, the Antichrist will come out of the bottomless pit. The beast is scarlet colored as a dragon, Satan, and his seven heads and seven horns are reminiscent of Satan. The seven heads represent seven kings and the ten horns, ten more kings. The kingdom of the beast will be the seventh world system, the seven heads. The five kingdoms that were fallen were Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, and Greece. The kingdoms that that is would be Rome in John's day. The one that is not yet to come, the seventh, would be the kingdom of the beast. If the seven heads represent kings, the five fallen of Roman rulers would be Julius, Caesar, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius, and Nero. How they get that, don't ask me. The one that would be is Domitian in John's day. The one that is not yet is the beast, the king of the revived Roman Empire. The ten horns. Verse 12 explains that these are the ten kings paralleling the ten horn toes of Daniel's image of the revived Roman Empire. Daniel 2, 36-45. John, in John's day, these kings had not yet received their power, which is reserved for the last days. The ten kings give support to the beast, with, and with his help, they will destroy the great whore. The waters. The waters on which the whore is seated are the peoples of the world. She will have influence over the whole world, politically, economically, and most of all, religiously. That forced the Roman Catholic Church, as some will tell you. That's why, you know, when it's, I'll say, you know, the, the great horror and, the, uh, you know, the mother of, the mother of harlots, the mother of harlots being the Protestant churches. That's what the Seventh-day Adventists will tell you, the Protestant churches, and they're not a Protestant church. They will tell you, like, Baptists will tell you the same thing, they're not a pro Protestant church. The application of horror of Revelation represents not simply the latter-day Roman system alone, but all the anti-Christian systems in the centuries past. They have killed God's servants. The Roman Catholic Church killed a lot of <laughs> fellow Christians. The development of this great world church is evident even now. False religion began back in Babylon, with Nimrod spreading from nation to nation, until the entire Roman system was filled with pagan doctrine and practices. In the last days, Protestant church groups will move closer to Rome, finally forming the great world church. The world church, the harlot, will meddle in the political and economic affairs of the world. Yeah, because somehow all these, you know, secular nations in Europe and Canada and all these are going to just give up their authority to a, a, a religion. They're just going to all of a sudden start believing in something without evidence. Yeah, it's just going to happen. Revelation 18. I mean, seriously, though, do you think that these na well, with the Muslims, well, considering the fact that they are so open arms with the Muslims, who knows? It makes you wonder. The voice of judgment, Revelation 18. Revelation 18, 1 through 3. This angel announces the fall of Babylon. 
Revelation 14, 8, Revelation 16, 19, the repetition of his fallings fallen suggests the dual judgment of religious and commercial Babylon, along with the mention of rewarding double in verse 6. This great city, the center of the world economics, the world, finally received deserved judgment. It has become a habitation of demons in it, and a haven for foul spirits. Verse 3 indicates that her worldwide influence is a drunken man. Is as drunken men all that matter to them is that she made them rich. The voice of separation. Revelations eighteen four through eight. Some of God's people are in this city, and God wants them to come out for two reasons. The city will be destroyed, and He wants them saved. The city is a sat satanic, and He does not want them defiled. Come up, it has always been God's call to His people. For salvation means separation from the world unto the Lord. Second Corinthians six fourteen. God's people do not belong to in the world because it glorifies itself. While the Christian is to glorify God, the world lives for sinful pleasures, while the Christian lives to please Christ. Babylon's pride is evident in verse 7 and verse 8 in the case that one day she will exchange it for sorrow and her riches for famine, the voice of mourning. Revelations 18, 9 through 19. True groups, earthly kings and merchants are laminating the fall of Babylon. They fortificated with Babylon by rejecting Christ and falling idols' money. Their luxurious living was now at an end, noted by the by the repetition of alas, alas, Babylon is judged in one day and one hour. Their merchants is gone. Both luxuries and necessities will be destroyed when God judges Babylon. Shipping and its industries will be destroyed and brought to ruin. Depending on the economic system, will be destroyed in men. The voice of rejoicing, Revelation eighteen twenty to 24 the voice of rejoicing, Revelation 18, 20, 24. The wicked do not share the same viewpoint as Christians. Just here, heaven rejoiced, but earth mourned when Satan was cast out. Revelation 12, 10 through 12. The same occurs how, now that Babylon has been destroyed. Heaven's rejoicing is over God's avenging of the blood of the martyrs. Heaven's prayers answered. The suddenness of God's judgment on the empire of the beast is indicated by the millstone being cast down, perhaps indicating the return of Christ, the smiting stone, pictured in Daniel 2, 34-35, 44-45. Just when the world thinks it's getting along without Christ, he will return to smash their system and destroy their works. When God says, no more, there is nothing man can do to change it. This completes the destruction of the beast's empire economically and religiously, and Christ will destroy his armies in the upcoming chapter 19. Yep.